What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I'm going to be doing another custom LEGO minifigure showcase video, and for this video I have four figures from X-Men Days of Future Past, which launches tonight at 10pm, and I'm super pumped for it, and as a result I made Wolverine in his new suit that he will be wearing in the future, and then these three guys back here are all from the past, young Xavier, young Magneto, and Beast who is also in his younger form, all of which I made in about a month, I had a lot uh, sh um, shorter of a time span than I did for the Spider-Man figures, but uh, I still wanted to have something to show for this movie because uh, I know it's going to probably be pretty awesome based on the reviews we've already heard. They're actually a lot higher than I expected, so I'm really looking forward to this movie tonight, and I wanted to have something to show for it. Now, I understand some of you guys over in Europe have already seen the film, but uh, we're just now getting it, getting to see it in the U.S., so a spoiler-free comment section for at least a few days, just a few days, would be very much appreciated, but otherwise, if you haven't seen the film, I can't stop people from putting spoilers in the comments so beware but um yeah so without further ado let's go ahead and get a better look at all four of these all right so we're gonna kick it off with the man himself wolverine and uh this is a figure that i wasn't planning on making up until about two weeks ago and uh that the same could be said for beast i wasn't planning to make him either until about uh a few days ago and I honestly am so glad that I did make these figures because first of all Wolverine turned out great and second of all he's the main character of the film and uh, yeah so one of the things is that all these figures aside from Magneto's face are all 100% hand painted by me and uh, as a result you can see this face also being painted uh, turned out awesome resembling Hugh Jackman I think it turned out really great I love the way the mouth looks and the eyes and the uh, dark circles that I have under the eyes the eyebrows the cheekbones uh, this, you know, the, 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 the mouth is actually one thing I wanted to mention. The mouth is actually based off the real Wolverine minifigure, uh, from the Lego group that was released back in 2012. The mouth is actually inspired off of that. Just a fun little fact there. And, um, yeah, then he also has some gray highlights on his hair there. And, uh, his, yeah, you know, obviously in this movie, Wolverine is getting kind of old. So that is a part of his new look in the future. So I added that onto my minifigure here. And, uh, yeah, other than that though, it's just a lot of different painted details to be as accurate as I could get him to. Uh, his new suit that he wears in the future and you'll notice he's got this dotted effect here on both arms and then he's got his shoulder pads all painted on along with some yellow highlights on his chest here a lot of different uh, shades of gray gunmetal black you can see I've got blue highlights on his arms and a little bit on his torso the X uh, belt buckle that he wears in the movie for obviously the X-Men and then a lot of painted details on the front of his legs not so much on the back because there really isn't a lot on the back of his legs in the movie and uh, then the back of the torso however uh, yeah, I based this off of one little shot in the trailer that was kind of blurry and the lighting was weird, so I, uh, forgive me if this is slightly inaccurate, but Fox have not released any images of the back of Wolverine's new suit, so this is the best I could get it. Um, but yeah, other than that though, you can see he does actually have some detail on the insides of his legs that I did not want to miss, and, uh, these details were last minute added, uh, but they still turned out really nice and obviously are really nicely consistent with the rest of the minifigure. You can see that we do have uh, Wolverine's claws as well. Wolverine does, you know, obviously have his animantium claws back in this movie, so I wanted to have those for this minifigure, and obviously those are the official uh, Wolverine claws that are included with the set. But other than that, though, there you go. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next minifigure, which happens to be Mr. Xavier. And here he is. Now, Charles Xavier was probably the most complex figure out of these four to say the least and clearly that is simply and solely just because of the wheelchair and uh, the problem with the wheelchair is the Lego group has never actually manufactured a wheelchair and uh, really it's just kind of this is the best design on the internet right now of a Lego wheelchair that you can seat your minifigures in, but the problem being is uh, it's really out of scale, so you really can't go right with a wheelchair as of right now, and this is the best I have regardless of how out of scale it is to, you know, minifigures and their standard height. Um, but, you know, Charles Xavier can't just not be in his wheelchair, so I figured I'd make the sacrifice of, you know, sacrificing the scale of it, and just generally you'll notice he doesn't have the X in the wheels, that's another uh, sacrifice that was made with this figure, and generally the wheelchair just doesn't exactly look 
100% like Charles Xavier's wheelchair, but at least it's a wheelchair because you can't just not have him in a wheelchair. And that's what I said to myself going into this figure, and uh, hopefully you guys can agree with me that uh, I think it was the right move. But this design isn't mine. It's actually from Etzel, who is a Swedish Eurobricks member. I'm not even sure if he's still around. He posted this design back in 2009, so I mean, I'm not sure if he's still around, but uh, if he is, I will link uh, to the article that he posted way back then in the description below, as it is still definitely, if you ask me, a great design, and that's why I decided to use it for my custom minifigure of Charles Xavier here. Another thing I want to note on is that you'll notice that he does have the dark blue uh, one by one modified bricks for the continuation of his legs, and uh, right in the center there, and those are expensive. I never knew how expensive they were until I actually made the order, and then uh, one, th one thing I want to point out that you're probably noticing yourself is this little mark here, and that is simply just a stress mark in the plastic that I honestly didn't see until just a few days ago, and I just didn't have enough time to fix it, but all I have to do really is just paint a new shoe onto a dark blue leg and then problem solved so uh, it's really no problem I just figured I'd note on it because uh, it bothers me so I uh, wanted to mention it but yeah, so moving on, you'll notice he does also have uh, the joystick right there that he's obviously using to operate his wheelchair, and that is, uh, trust me, it is not easy to attach that thing, uh, because it, it's just, it's not easy to pose the minifigure in the wheelchair properly, um, but he's got the handles back here in case anyone wants to push uh, Mr. Xavier around, and also you'll notice he has the wheels down here, and originally I was going to use the skateboard wheels that were from 2007 and before, um, but unfortunately it didn't arrive on time, and um, the order just, I guess, just decided to sit in the Orlando post office and never actually made it up here to northern Florida so uh, I had to give him these wheels which honestly are a pain because they don't actually stay on if I were to pick Mr. Xavier up right here, right now these wheels would fall off and it's just one of the many flaws once again of having this wheelchair the way it is but this, once again this is the best we got ah so yeah Mr. Xavier, that's pretty much it for the minifigure. Now, other than that, obviously, I fully painted the torso, and I'm really proud of the torso. While it's simple, I'm really happy with it because it's clean and accurate, and that's what I was going for. And uh, also, his head, I tried to make it look as much like James McAvoy as possible. Uh, you know, obviously, now that he's got long hair and a beard in this movie, but um, other than that, guys, that's it for uh, Charles Xavier, Professor X himself, and uh, easily, he made first class for me, so I'm really hoping he does it again with Days of Future Past. We'll We'll see. I'm looking forward to the movie tonight. Uh, but regardless, guys, that's it for this minifigure. And uh, let's take a look at Magneto. And for our third figure, we've got Eric here, Magneto. And uh, this is honestly a figure. This was the first figure I made of these four, actually. It was like, I mean, I, I didn't really clarify, but it was just going to be young Magneto and young Xavier because I really love their characters in first class and I really only had interest in making them. And then I ended up making Wolverine and Beast, like I mentioned. Um, but yeah, so... Magneto. What I did here was I took the official Magneto helmet and uh, it pretty much I sanded off the entire uh, three-dimensional aspect that was on the uh, you know the top of uh, his helmet and uh, so in doing so I filed it down, sealed it over, made it look smooth again and painted it in a dark red color with a weathered effect to it along with all the Magneto details that he has on his helmet in this upcoming film. And um, yeah other than that though one thing I do want to mention is his head and his head for the first time in a while I didn't paint it because for like one of the only occasions in my life uh, Lego actually had an available head that actually really did resemble Michael Fassbender's Magneto and uh, I honestly I was just about to get started on the minifigure when I saw this Legolas minifigure on my desk and uh, from the like the Desolation of Smaug combo pack that I had and I, I was like hey you know that looks just like Eric so I went ahead, put a Magneto helmet on him, and I was like, okay, this clicked, this works, and I'm sticking with it. And therefore, he is the only minifigure of these four that does not have a painted head. Um, but yeah, so other than that, though, you can see his torso and belt are just, you know, the accurate painted details. He does not have a complicated suit. Therefore, this minifigure was not, you know, that big of a ride for me to make. Uh, it wasn't too big of a challenge, but I'm still happy with the result because it is accurate to his appearance, and that's what I'm always going for. And he does have the uh, necessary 
military detail on the uh, you know on the sides of his legs as well as seen with his new suit in the film and his arms are painted dark red to match the uh, color of his torso and helmet but other than that though that's pretty much it for Magneto and uh, I really hope he wears this suit for more than just one sequence in the movie but I doubt uh, he, he'll wear it otherwise because we've only seen him wear the suit in the uh, football stadium sequence so we'll see how that goes but I'm really happy that I did make the suit regardless because it is definitely pretty awesome Alright, and for the last figure for my X-Men Days of Future Past showcase video, we have Hank McCoy Beast. And uh, I honestly, this is a figure, I, I mentioned it a bunch of times in this video, but I wasn't going to make him up until about a few days ago, so I'm surprised myself that he's even in this video. But I'm glad he is, because he honestly turned out looking great to me, and I'm really happy with the final result. And you'll notice that uh, his face, like the rest of him and the rest of the figures you saw in the showcase, once again, aside from Magneto's face, is 100% hand-painted, and uh, therefore his face as well included. And the face is always a big thing for me, and I'm really happy with the way this one turned out as well. And a uh, big thing about making Beast is always uh, the amount of hair that he has uh, because obviously he is beast and also because you have to make his eyebrows bushy you have to really get that sense of aggression with his mouth and all those things that I tried to capture on his face alone and then his the outfit he's wearing uh, I'm not going to spoil it but at one point in the film beast ends up in a fountain and uh, this is the outfit that he wears in that scene because we've seen set photos of uh, the actor Nicholas I forget his last name uh, on set filming and uh, this outfit I tried tried to uh, replicate it to the best of my ability and you can see it's got uh, the plaid or uh, not really plaid but more just like the stripe pattern on his uh, brown shirt that he wears underneath his blue, uh, dark blue jacket and uh, you'll notice I have a lot of different gray uh, linings all over the jacket there including wrinkles and uh, buttons and things like that and uh, the buttons actually on his shirt there actually have uh, little black dots going within those but other than that you can see I did paint uh, some detail onto his legs such as uh, you'll notice he does have the boots painted on wrapping all around all four sides of each leg and uh, the legs here this area anyway is actually based off of you guys might be familiar with the new Death Star Troopers battle pack that was released at the beginning of this year uh, by the Lego group the legs are actually based off of that uh, but obviously this time on a pair of dark tan legs instead of black like the Death Star Troopers and also I have his pockets painted on there as well while the legs are still poseable regardless of what I did paint onto them but other than that uh, that's pretty much it for Beast I did paint on the obviously the necessary details on his belt and also I should probably mention that I did paint on the hair on his hands and this is something I wanted to add uh, because Beast has a lot of hair especially on his hands and feet obviously his feet are covered up from with his shoes but I wanted to make sure I had the hair on his hands and uh, you can see I did add that on there to make it look nice and bushy as well um, but other than that though that's pretty much it for Beast and uh, a figure that I was not expecting myself to actually make but I'm certainly glad I did because it's just another mutant to have uh, with the rest of my X-Men figures and hopefully I'll make some more figures because you know it may not necessarily be the last uh, because you guys probably saw my Spider-Man showcase and hey I ended up making Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborn after that so I might make a couple more mutants I don't know we'll see but what I do know is that I'm looking forward to this movie tonight and I can't believe it's already out or at least coming out um, it's been all, honestly really fun making these figures in the short amount of time that I had um, but yeah guys that's it for my X-Men Days of Future Past Showcase, and uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Logan, I was a very different man. So, you still want me to believe that all of this happens in the future because of us? You still think I'm lying to you? Be patient with me. Patience isn't my strongest suit. Thousands of people died because your decision! <sighs> All right, guys, and there you have it, the showcase video on my four X-Men Days of Future Past minifigures, and I hope you enjoyed them, and if you did, be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion in the comments, as uh, your support definitely goes a long way, especially when I had a really short amount of time to make these minifigures. For example, my Spider-Man figures, I had six months to make four figures for that film, and only one month to make four figures for this one. So, granted, those figures were a lot more complicated than these, but uh, it's still...
still, like I said, your support means a lot to me regardless of how long it might have taken. But I mean, uh, yeah, guys, you can also follow me on Twitter and the book face. Links to both of those are always in the description below as well. And you might have noticed all those cool action shots that I use as kind of like an introduction for each of the four figures. And uh, all of those are available on my Facebook page if you'd like to check them out, along with a uh, nice clear photo of these four lined up next to each other. But uh yeah, so I'm going to go catch a screening of X-Men Days of Future Past because I absolutely loved First Class and all the performances by those actors and then the idea of them in the same movie as the original cast and a story that collides with one another as a sequel to First Class. I Honestly, I am thrilled by the just the general concept of this movie and the fact that it's getting good reviews and that it's a really good movie. It excites me even more, so I'm going to stop recording this video and I'm going to go catch that screening at 10 p.m. So uh, I'll catch you later. All right. Bye. What's going on, guys? It's Michael of GF, and today I'm going to be doing another custom Lego mini. I need to form my words better, damn. yet but uh, I've got no I should, damn it. days of future past and uh, this time we've got no hopefully it suffices but uh, it suffices it suffices even a word I don't think so gosh damn it His face is fully 100% handed painted damn it I mean as a result of the pressure I kind of uh, damn it something to show for this film as uh, I am super <sighs> My screening, I'm, eh, when I say I'm tired, I really mean it. It's like five o'clock in the morning. Hank, shouldn't you be blue? I have my methods for suppressing the effects. I actually based it off of Bruce Banner. <clears throat> oh, I forgot Fox doesn't own him.